guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julie and I'm the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. Today we are going to work on the second project of my small guest bathroom. Let's get to building. First, what we have to do is we have to measure the space in the bathroom for how tall I'm gonna need this to be or how wide it needs to be to fit in the wall perfectly. So let's go ahead and go do that first. actually going to use I'm going to use these to mount it up on the wall before I do that we're going to cut this to length and then I'm gonna sand it and then I'm gonna stain it and then I'm gonna coat it with a couple of coats of polycrylic to protect it from the water being in the bathroom and right next to the shower so let's go ahead and get started on that It's all nice and smooth and ready for some stain. The reason why I sanded it, even though it was already pretty smooth, is because I wanted to get it down to more of that raw pine look, is because if I were to stain it with that dark haze that it had on it from sitting around, almost like a sun, it had almost like a, a sun, like bleached look from sitting around for so long. But I wanted to get it down to that pine so that the stain would look right. So let's get inside and we will stain it. So I'm staining it my usual, early American. I prefer the Minwax version, but that one's at Lowe's since Home Depot doesn't carry Minwax products anymore, which is annoying because it's my favorite brand for things like this. But I use what I can get and I've got my glove and a rag, and I'm just going to stain it this beautiful color. And you wanna make sure to get it even because it's really easy on this rounded surface to kind of miss spots. All right, that was pretty simple. Now I just gotta get something to wipe off the excess stain. we go. Now I'm just going to let this sit in the sun and dry for an hour or so before I come back and coat it with some polycarlic. Okay, I did one coat on this and now it is dry so I'm just going to do the second coat. I also did a coat on the brackets that are going to be holding it up on the wall. This makes them look that much prettier. In my opinion, and really it's only been like 15 minutes and this is already dry, so that's why I love polycrylic. I can get on with my life and my projects. So I got it to the perfect height and so I measured how high this is. It looks like the center is 11 and a half inches. So I'm just going to mark that space. Alright, let's see. Definitely needs to be smaller. Because you know why? I forgot to take into account the bracket 
depth. So let me go trim that off. Pretty sure the last time I hung one of these, I did it wrong too. Forgot to take into consideration the, you know, it fits in there. But I got to inset the screws a bit because they're sticking out. Okay, it's a whole thing. I'm gonna use this to inset the screws a little bit. They included flathead screws and I hate flathead screws. They are a pain in my butt. So I switched them out for Phillips, but the Phillips heads were slightly too big. So uh, I swear nothing can just be simple. I probably need a drywall anchor. I'm gonna need some drywall anchors after all that work. I really probably should have done this to start. I wouldn't, I shouldn't have even thought that there would have been studs where I need them because there never are. So I've got these that I'm going to use to put some drywall anchors in the wall. That's in there. All right, let's see if I got it right this time. Maybe not. I'm always afraid to cut off too much. I need to cut off slightly a little bit more, just a tiny bit more. Ah. I still need to cut off more, but you know what? I would rather cut off more than get it up there and it'd be too small for the spot. And then I'd have to go out and buy another one. So I'll take the tiny little cuts a million times over that situation. Moment of truth. I've said it about five times now. <laughs> if it Look at that. It is so beautiful. So much better than this ugly white thing. This ugly white thing. All right, let's get on to the building of the cornice. To be honest, I'm not exactly even sure what I'm going to do with it, but we will figure it out as we go along. I kind of wanted to try to see if I could make it decorative looking, so kind of mimic the East Lake style that is gonna be in here, the dresser that's gonna come in here. So we shall see. Let's get some ideas rolling. Well, I hope you enjoyed that small project. <laughs> it was small and simple, but yet somehow I managed to make it complicated. <laughs> but. Aren't you glad that I am doing these things so that I can tell you all the things not to do? On top of, after I finish a project, I'm able to think about it logically and come up with a way to make it more efficient for you. So that is what my blog posts actually do. You might notice sometimes that my blog posts and my videos do not coincide with um, the steps in the same way. And that's because when I do a project, a lot of times I do them out of order for efficiency. So once I finish a project, then I can look back on it and say, if I had done this first, it would have made the process way easier and more efficient. And actually this step should have been the first step that I took. In this case, for these, I would actually recommend installing the brackets first with drywall screws ahead of time. That way you could take a measurement from the inside of that bracket to the inside of that bracket and actually have your true dowel rod like length what you need to cut it to and avoid like the six cuts that I had to make <laughs> you might have to make like one adjustment at that point but <clears throat> I had to make a lot of adjustments because I did the project technically out of order for efficiency but I am very happy with the outcome I think it is absolutely gorgeous it has added so much more class than that cheap 
tension rod that was from the Dollar General. I am in love with these curtains. I think they have really elevated the space and <clears throat> just made it look so much prettier. I'm very happy with it. Make sure to stay tuned for the next projects that I have coming up. I am building that cornice, which some people refer it to as a valance. A lot of times when you're putting it above windows, it would be called a, a, a valance. Its terminology is called a cornice. It's basically just a decorative piece to hide a rod, but I'm not sure that I'm gonna hide my rod now that it's all pretty. So it's just another piece of prettiness to add to the space. And, <clears throat> and we're gonna try it out and see if we love it. Another project that's coming up after that will be me repurposing an East Lake wash stand into a vanity for this space. And I'm gonna probably have to redo the entire backsplash that's behind the light fixture and the mirror, simply because the width of it is probably not going to align with the width of the wash stand and it will look wonky. So it'll probably have to be completely redone. And honestly, I've been considering that maybe I made the space too busy by putting the shiplap there and I may just decide to uninstall it and paint it. Just let the wash stand be the beauty and the piece that draws all of the focal attention in this room. I'm excited to show you the sink and the faucet that I picked out that's going to look gorgeous on this antique wash stand and the entire process of refinishing the wash stand to make it look right with the wood tones in this room but thank you so much friends for watching all the way through if you've made it this far if you are not subscribed please subscribe if you like this content and share it with any friends you feel would enjoy it also thanks again see you later